Hello, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon. Good Hello. afternoon everyone. I'm Jenny. Thank you for joining our online event. Today, we are glad to invite Mr. Tan to give a talk with the topic of effective parenting with brain in mind. In the later talk, our speaker is going to share about the ways to develop your child in more effective ways to understand brain-friendly learning and teaching methods. Furthermore, our speaker will also share about what is effective parenting and how to build good parent-child relationship. After the talk, we will have a Q&A section and all of the parents can feel free to unmute yourself or you can type your question in the chat room so that we can carry out the discussion together. Now, let's welcome our speaker, Mr. Tan. Thank you. Yeah, Everyone, uh, can you hear me? If you can, can you put a number one in the chat box so that I can verify that I can proceed? Well, I'm actually sharing my, my slides. Just one person only, Mandy Wong. Yeah, thank you. So I, I can see all your questions. If you have any doubts, any questions, uh, don't, don't hesitate to throw all the questions into the chat box. Okay, let's start. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to share this particular topic called Effective Parenting with Brain in Mind. Uh, so I'm sure you understand parenting is a very challenging job nowadays especially to our kids or to our children. But again, why I particularly put a topic called brain in mind. So the idea is to actually to let you know it is very important, very crucial that in 21st century, you need to understand how to develop your children with the brain in mind. I mean to say, when we start anything, we always have to begin with the end in mind. That means you have to start to understand what is the end result that we desire. So allow me to share along the way. Uh, because I understand I was given about 15, 50, uh, 50 to one hours to share this topic on effective parenting. Okay, so how I kick-started this particular uh, project of mine to talk about brain, especially brain in learning, brain in thinking. Okay, because I need you to understand, uh, I need you to understand in 21st century, it used to be a big fish, big fish eat a small fish. But in 21st century, it is very important and we have to realize that it's now the fast fish that eat the slow fish. The faster fish will have to eat the slower fish. So how do you treat your mind is to understand these particular slides that I'm sharing. Okay, the slide is actually all about destiny. So what is important that you have to watch your thought, they become your words, and watch your words, they become your actions, and your action, it become your habits. From the habit, it become your character. So from your character, it become your destiny. So this is actually written by Frank Outlaw in the 17th century. I was amazed with what he shared because whatever outcome of your life, what's your life purpose, it all begins from your thought. Okay, very important. We have to realize that. Okay, so, so the next one I want to share is actually about, I, we wouldn't wish that, okay, from whatever we're experiencing right now, we do not want to work, keep on working, working until okay, we have to check out our life. Why? Because you have to understand, like I said earlier, right? In 21st century, we have to now think of how to do things differently. It's no longer whatever we experience or we do in the 20th, 20th century. Just look at this particular um, uh, simple, simple needs for this, uh, what they call the talent management, the people that need to be trained. Like understand in 2020, you need to understand how to solve complex problem solving. You have to go into critical thinking because time is a factor right now. Creativity is very important. In fact, in 21st century, I emphasize a lot about innovation, people management, and so on and so forth, as compared to the previous in 2015. Okay, let me introduce myself officially. My name is S.K. Tan. Okay, I'm actually used to be an Asia leading brain-based learning expert. Eventually, as I delve more and more in depth, I would like to categorize as to like, I focus on management of the brain and management of the mind. So this is actually my forte. And then uh, what I do, I actually go into three different expertise which I'll share with you earlier, later. And one of the ways for you to understand what I mean by brain-based learning, or you can call it brain-friendly learning. Okay, I normally introduce my present, SK equals to Sukakawan. Okay, SK equals to Sukakawan, that's actually what I, how I introduce to the adults. If I deal with kids, kids will give me a different name. They will call me Sukakawan. Okay, for ladies, I'm sure you experienced one of the very popular cosmetic products from Japan, namely SK2. Okay, SK2. Okay, so, so this is actually just an idea for you to understand how to remember. I also involved in recycling, especially with technology-based. So sometimes they call me Sambaking. Okay, 
when I involve in teaching or sharing, sharing people or guiding people how to learn, I would like to make it as easy as one, two, three. Meaning to say, when I guide you through how the process works, I do not wish to go through more than three steps, no more than three steps. Okay, so what do I do? I'm actually a brain applicator. That means anything I do, I would like to apply from the brain perspective. I do a lot of re-innovation. I reinvent stuff. I do a lot of research. I also start involving into anything can restore, actually can help for the human, human uh, potential or talent management. I also involving into recycling as to like how to restore the Mother Earth back to normal. I'll give one example. If you have to start taking care of Mother Earth, especially on the soil, because a lot of people talk about recycling, recycling. I'm talking about rethinking. Rethinking as to like how to restore the Mother Earth, especially the soil back to normal. Just the same like human being, we, our emphasis is that we depend on the blood to transport the nutrients and also depends on the blood to retrieve all the, the waste. But same goes to our Mother Earth, the soil is basically her blood. So we need to restore the Mother Earth back to normal. It's very important. So I also do a lot of coaching, uh, business coaching and life coach, especially on wellness and learning. And I actually particularly now do a lot of actually about re, uh, environmental care using nanotechnology and effective microorganism. So it's more about the green. So I love to do education and training, especially through the brain base. Okay, I actually uh, used to do training, do a lot of trainings for adults, for corporation, uh, even to the educators, especially the kindergarten teachers, right? And of course, for me to be able to accomplish, able to really drive to the result that I desire, I study practically every genesis available that I know. So here, I'd like to give some pointers to some parents uh, is by challenging you. Do you have an idea who was a genius of the century? Who's the number one genius? If you can, please write down into the chat box. Just one answer will do, please. Mm. Uh, I need your full participation, though we're actually quite apart. We are doing online. Uh, if you can, just write down who do you think was the century of the, of the what I call the, the, the genius of the century. Nobody answer me? No idea? Uh, okay, typically if I were to have interaction, a lot of people will say, okay, Einstein is the genius of the century. Just to let you know, Einstein in world ranking only ranked number 10. He's only number 10. Actually, the number one genius of the century is Leonardo da Vinci. Okay, when opportunity arises, I can share with you more. Okay, but again, all these geniuses, right, they have particularly have two different attributes, special attributes. Okay, number one, do you think they are left-handed or they are right-handed? Okay, make a wild guess. Okay. Do, they, do you think they are left-handed or right-handed? Okay, most of the geniuses, they are left-handed. Why? Because we are talking about the right brain activation. If you understand, we have one brain divided into two hemispheres, the left brain and the right brain. Okay, I hope you, you, you listen carefully, yeah? Left brain and right brain. So our right brain control the left part of the body and therefore the left brain control the right parts of the body. So this is actually how our brain works. But of course, like I said, most of the geniuses, they are left-handed. So they are very strong with their right brain. So this is where I need to strongly emphasize and encouraging the children, uh, as even the parents, to guide the children using their right brain. Of course, eventually, it's a, it's a whole brain arena. The second attribute is that most of these geniuses, do, do, they achieve vegetarian. So in order for your children to be able to be smarter, healthier, so I strongly encourage, cut down on the meat, okay, and then take more vegetable. Unfortunately, a lot of children, they like to go with their fast food. So I will show, I'll share with you as I go along. Okay. I, I like to start with this. The, our, life, our life is actually very simple, but never easy. One typical example is that government have been encouraging children, please exercise every day. Parents, please exercise every day. At least exercise for 30 minutes in order to be a healthier body. It's a very easy task. It's a very simple task, sorry. It's a very simple task, but never easy to do. Okay, I give you an example. Any one of you, especially the parent, suffering from any of this pain, start from the neck pain, shoulder pain, back pain, pelvic pain, kneecap pain, uh, ankle pain, and so forth. I'm sure majority of the human being, especially adult, they have one of these pain. What does, that what does that imply? It actually implies that we human being as a warm blood animal, okay, we're supposed to move our body every day. It'd be good that we can walk 10,000 steps a day. Unfortunately, it's a very simple task, but never easy to do. Imagine if you're able to make an effort every day to walk 10,000 steps, I will assure you that any one of these pain will never exist. Okay. In fact, I will just interpret. If for those of you familiar with uh, Mandarin or Cantonese, right? If you were to translate animal into Chinese, it's called Tong Wu or Tong Mat. Direct translate again is called moving object. 
as a moving object, we are warm-blooded, we need to move our body every day if you want to eliminate or minimize of any one of this pain. So like I said, life is actually simple but never easy. Okay, so I will give you another challenge by, uh, by, by, by just challenging yourself. Do you think you have good memories? Uh, I'm sure majority of children, they have better memories as they evolve, become adult, become senior. They always complain that, oh, my memory, deter my memory deteriorated. I can't memory as I memorize as good as I used to be. Just to share with you, we have a very powerful brain. Therefore, we have a powerful memory. It's just that you need to use the right method. Here, I need you to, please do me a favor. Huh? I need your full participation. Write down the answer in the chat if you remember. I'm going to give you 10 objects to be memorized. Memorize 10 objects. It will begin with three, T-I-E, the three, eyes, triangle, car, glove, gun, octopus, cat, and bowling ball. Please repeat what I just said. I hope I said slow enough. Okay, if you don't mind, I just start again. Three, I, triangle, car, glove, gun, rainbow, octopus, cat, and bowling ball. Can you type them down, please? Or even write onto your own piece of paper. I give you about 30 seconds to type as much as you can. I don't see anything reply in the chat box. Uh, I, I hope you can actually participate. Just share with me what you have available. What have you thought of? Right, good. Okay, I see okay, some people answer. Give me the answer, four of them. Now, I'm going to give you the next challenge. I need them to be, to be listed up in order. Let me start from the, number one, the object number one until the object number 10. Right? So I'm sure a lot of people have this issue, but let me share with you how easy to remember this 10 object in less than one minute, one minute only. Okay, allow me to explain. Huh? Start is actually three, because if you look at number one is three, because the tree trunk look like number one. Two, we all know that number two, because we all human beings have two eyes, right? Triangle, obviously all triangle have three angles, right? For a car, obviously you have four tires. Right, for glove, glove must be worn onto five fingers. Associate the five fingers with the glove or the glove with the five fingers. The gun, this is an old gun. This old gun can only have six chambers, six bullets. So number six is, or even America, uh, the Western people say six shooters. So we can only six, six bullets. So number six is gun. Rainbow, everybody knows that. Rainbow all comes with seven colors. Okay, seven colors. Octopus, obviously it got eight legs. Now, Western people say cat, got how many life? Nine lives. So cat is nine. Nine is cat. So finally, bowling ball must knock down how many pin? Ten pin. Can you start again? Give me the list of all these objects. Very good. So uh, correct. All correct. See, just just another one who can actually give me the answer. I have one. Uh, Musa actually did it right. Very good. Keep it up. So I, I need you to understand that actually our brain is so powerful that we just have to make the brain understand what are we delivering, what are we dealing with. So I'll give you the formulation afterwards. Just one person, huh? okay, fine. So, so just to share with you, we all can learn. Okay, in fact, what I'm promoting right, right now is actually teaching people how to learn. At the same time, teaching people how to think. Because very, very important in the, for the child development, especially developing their talent, their brain potential, you have to train them knowing how to learn, but you have to learn from brain perspective. There's a reason why I say it's called brain compatible, brain-based, or even brain-friendly learning. But again, please remember, first thing, we all learn from experts. That means we have to copycat from somebody that's familiar with the subject matter. So we call the SME, subject matter expert. So we all learn by copycatting. In a psychology term, it's called modeling. So we all understand that if we understand why children can learn very well, because they keep on repeating the same process. So repetition is actually very important. In fact, it's called, it's a mother of learning. So only upon repeating, then it becomes habitual. And finally, all parents, please take note, okay? Association, always associate what you do not know with what, what you're really familiar with. See, why you're able to remember because I start associating what you do not know, like one is three, two is I, and so forth. In fact, now, let me ask you a question. Tell me the name, the object number five. Number five. What is actually the object number five? Anyone? Uh, what is object number five? Why number five? Very good. It's glove because five has to, the glove has to be worn into five fingers. Tell me the number for car. What is the number for car? Number four. Why? Because four tires. Tell me the object for number 10. Number 10. 
Very good. Bowling ball. You see, number 10, why the bowling ball must knock down 10 pins. You start associating what you do not know with what you're familiar. So I hope in this lesson, you understand learning is actually not difficult as we think. Just have to find the association. Copycatting first, repetition, then associate what you do not know with what you're familiar. Now, just to share with you, this is actually one of the uh, projects that I did 20 years ago. And in fact, it was endorsed by USM, Unicef Science Malaysia, Penang. Okay, is to talk about 3D art. Why, why I came up with this idea? Because I start understanding how human brain works. At the end of the day, please understand, all human think in what? There's a language that brain understand. There's a brain understandable language. I do not want, please listen, huh? I do not want you to think about pink elephant. Can you tell me what is actually portraying inside the head of your brain? It is a picture of the pink elephant, obviously. Don't think about pink elephant, it will show you pink elephant inside the head. So again, this is, from Da Vinci because Da Vinci, why it was labeled to be the gene of the century because it started to draw. In fact, for a lot of educators, right, we're all familiar with this word called visual spatial intelligence. It's the ability to think in picture. Children, baby time from very young, even reach to adulthood or reach out to the senior, you need to learn how to draw. You need to understand everything is all portrayed inside the form of pictures. We all think in pictures. There's a reason why train them to know how to draw. Now, just to share with an example, uh, one example, this actually was like in 2003, a nine-year-old who drew a house, flat house, okay? You can see the house is actually very flat, but can you imagine after, after six hours, six hours, what can he draw? Okay, what could he draw? This is actually what he came up with, three-dimensional, right? Three-dimensional pictures, okay? Next, okay, I want you to see, this is actually a, People would think that this is actually a pond, but it wasn't. It, it was actually a donut, okay, a donut. But again, you see, eh, the donut actually come with three-dimensional label, come with a shadow because of the sun direction and so forth. Same goes to the flower. Right, next, a 14-year-old child who drew a house and a cake before. But after six hours, this is what he came up with, right? I, I need you to understand everyone can learn just to find the right method, especially the method that appreciated by the brain. 25 years old, kindergarten teacher. During that period, I invited about 200 kindergarten teachers to do a test run to find out why all the Malaysian in general, even inclusive myself, we couldn't draw very well because this is not an important subject. It's not essential for children to get flying colors in drawing. But please bear in mind, parents must train your children to draw at all times. In fact, never allow children to write until they are seven. You must encourage them to draw. I give one example like when I, I used to have a childcare center together with my, my daughter. I want I only have one daughter. All the, my children never never write a single word until they are they reach out to primary school. They only learn how to draw. They draw their name, they draw ABC, they draw their Chinese character, they never write. Okay, that's the reason behind. Now imagine this teacher drew this particular house, which is flat, just like ordinary people. But after one day of training, okay, I mean the post test, you see they start drawing very creatively. Now, four-year-old child, I love children, with the younger they are, the more creative they are. You see, they draw a, a cut tree, right? A chop down tree with all the imagination, with all the creativity. Yes, precision not important, but it's how they express their thought inside their head. Okay, see this is another four-year-old child, draw a clown. Another five-year-old, draw a sunflower. Can you, can you see that? Very creative. Five-year-old child, right? And this is one of my favorite durian men, drew by a five-year-old child. Watch carefully, a five-year-old child versus a 26-year-old teacher. Can you see the difference? Can you see that your children, the younger they are, the more creative they are? Please do not kill their creativity. Allow them to flow whatever is actually inside their head. Let them express into the piece of paper. Don't encourage them, please go and write beautifully. Build writings can be done only after seven. Prior to that, encourage them to draw, 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 okay? Even I don't ask you to stop after seven, okay? Just continue draw and write. Depends on the age group, huh? Do you remember? Now, eight years old, eight years old. Now, I, I want you to observe this very carefully, right? This is actually a long time ago. This is due by a ADHD child, attention deficit, hyperactive disorder child. He was nine year old, but eventually, of course, a lot of people label them, oh, they cannot concentrate and so forth. This is yes and this is wrong. Just have to encourage them to express their thought inside onto a piece of paper. See, he drew a very beautiful mouse. And this is a drawing drew by him, a beautiful horse. Everything that he drew was like real, okay? 
you can just rest assured children have all the intelligence, they have all the, no, the ability that want to express. Teach them the right way. 28-year-old 28, 28 teacher, a senior teacher, very established association, couldn't believe that he could draw. Uh, he thought that he never draw, but able, able to come up with a, what they call a high-tech caterpillar. 22-year-old, our oldest student was actually 80 plus, where there are two of them, professor came from India Unisys to actually learn from us. Because they are not here to learn how to draw, it's to understand how the brain works. Now imagine this is drew by a 46 year old. Okay, lady. Now look at this. This was uh, my, consider my partner right now, who actually take care of my son, uh, take care of his center in Ipoh. In 1999, he came, he wanted to understand how the brain works. He couldn't draw, but eventually her, his talent is actually on drawing. Now, this is actually one drawing that took him about four hours to draw. Four hours, okay? He just wake up because this is associated to uh, what they call this Thomas Edison ability, okay? Like today's subject is to understand, understand how, the, how potential the brain is. Huh? This took him another two hours. This one another two hours. Sorry, it was not four hours. And this one took him four hours. Four hours to draw. I, I need you to understand every human potential has a unique brain structure, brain signature. But everyone has a unique ability to express a different way. Some are good in drawing, some are good in dancing, some are good in kinesthetics, some are good in stitches, and so on and so forth. So you just have to identify and observe what are your children are capable of. Okay, these are all the product ranges that I've developed. I've developed more than what I have right now, like Inso for posture. Like I say, I focus on human talent. I focus on human potential. So in order to optimize the brain potential, I need to have a different tool, different technology to be able to activate one to, to draw that potential to the fullest. Naturally, the keyword is natural. Okay, I, I give you an example. I want to strongly emphasize later when I show you some of the, uh, what they call the uh, accomplishment that we had is that we want to encourage parents, please do not let your children go natural, stop taking too much of medication. Okay, like my daughter was born with no vaccination. Okay, no vaccination, no medication, no doctors. Never take uh, what they call medicine at all. But of course, he only under, underwent two, two types of uh, injection. First one injection is a vaccine vac in, injection, just simply because I have no choice but to take the IC. The second one is just to extract a baby tooth during then. Okay, that was a long time ago. This another guy, I'm not sure you heard about him before. His name is Wes Wong. He was my student and he was become the second, uh, the second most powerful human calculator in the world. Malaysia fastest human calculator, okay, the human calculator. Uh, that was about a long time ago, 2012, right? So today, he was still focusing on promoting the math. So I trained him on some of the visualization. I trained him about health and so on and so forth. Okay, so we just, uh, here we emphasize a lot about mathematics. Now, parents, I need you to take note. Uh, I don't strongly emphasize on ability, uh, how much you know inside your head. I emphasize on the learning, okay? Shuesi, in Mandarin, it's called Shuesi, hocks up, okay? Learning. Why is learning is very important? Now, please note, uh, I put this into an inverted triangle. Is knowledge important? It used to be. But knowledge now can be obtained through internet, through Wikipedia, through Google, Mr. Google, through YouTube. You can practically learn anything from, from the internet to acquire the necessary knowledge for you to be skillful in your job. So you only contribute about 5%. How about skill? Skill is important, but only to us, it's only 10%. What is really important is the mindset. You have to start really focusing on changing the mindset, especially you think, especially in this, this during this, ten, this decade, okay? We are reaching to 2020, things are running fast. So we have to start and impose on a different approach, especially the mindset to think differently. I give an example, in order to establish that, I need you to think about it. Apply, please apply 15 multiplied by 18. That means you go to multiply 15 by 18. If I were to ask you to do on a piece of paper, I'm sure you can do it. But of course, it'd be faster to do it with your handphone calculator. But again, because we are now onto the subject called brain, brain application, please do your best to use your brain to understand. In fact, you don't need calculator. You don't need your handphone. You don't need to be put onto a piece of paper. I need you to realize that, especially for Chinese school, most of the children, they know how to memorize their timetable. Their timetable is always 12 by 12. But if you want your children, just like India, to be really good in the application of the mathematics, I will have to encourage you to go with timetable 19 by 19. Remember that. Now, see, of course, here, I need you to understand. Once I re refer to the timetable, I need you to understand. Can you share with me what multiply by what? What digit multiply by what digit equals to 15? 
and therefore what digit multiplied by what digit equals to 18. We apply on 3. Eh? So you will see that 3 multiplied by 5 is 15. 3 multiplied by 6 is 18. Now all I need to do is just reshuffle the numbers. 3 and 3 together, 5 and 6 together. So you'll see 9 multiplied by 30 and therefore the answer will be 270. Still follow me? If you can, please, can you type in 1? Because I do not wish that I speak too fast, whereby you are just like catching up and you couldn't understand. Very good. So understand, it's about time that you need to apply your mind and your brain. Okay, see things from different perspectives. Now, here, another one. Okay, look at all. Huh? All means actually there's a second option. Because in real world, we always face problems every day. But there are multiple choice of solution to solve that problem. This is actually one of my favorite subjects whereby I train about innovative in the corporation. So I do train the kids as well, right? So look at this, all. All means what? Let's simplify it, okay? Don't do anything on 15, but focus on the 18. So what other timetable can I break it down? Break it down to do this, simpl to do this simple calculation. I focus on two. Meaning to say like 15 multiplied by two multiplied by nine because two multiplied by nine is equal to 18. So therefore 30 multiplied by nine is still give you 270. You understand what I'm saying? So application in terms of thinking is more important right now. We have acquired all the necessary. In fact, majority of the human beings on earth, right? They're very knowledgeable. They have all the necessary skill set, but it's about to treat your mindset, to start thinking, how can I do faster, do more productive, but yet do it naturally. Now, again, we all know that we have one brain divided into two hemispheres, but of course, you can depend on machine like EEG machine to go and scan your brain, whether they're actually balanced or not, right? But one of the ways I would like to share with you is to start exploring, okay, using some brain activities to see whether your left and right brain are balanced or not. Now, by any of a show of hand, uh, please, parent, I need your attention and participation. By any, by, by any of your hand, right, show me your big thumb. Okay, just show me a big thumb. When I say switch, I need you to cover your thumb and show me your pinky finger. When I say switch again, cover your pinky finger and show me your thumb. I'm going to do it slow. We do it right first before you do faster and faster. Huh? Ready? Switch. Switch. Switch, 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 switch. Now you start to have some challenges because of sickness. It's okay, just carry on, okay? And I need to go faster now. Switch, 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 switch. Okay, now switch your hand with the thumbs up. Switch the other hand, really. Right? Earlier you, you might use right hand, now this time you use your left hand or vice versa. Huh? Okay, same thing, repeat the same procedure. Switch, 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 switch. Very good. This time, two thumbs up. Next two thumbs. Okay, ready? Switch. 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 Now go faster. Huh? Switch. 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 So I'm sure that having two, two hands have more challenges because you are now activating right, right side and left side of the brain at the same time. You're doing a concurrent activities. I mean, you need to use two sides of the brain to, to, to control both sides of the hand. And let's do something simpler. One hand with the thumbs up, the other hand with the pinky up. One hand with the thumbs up, the other hand with the pinky up. You are repeating the same procedure. When I say switch, you need to switch them accordingly. Okay, ready? Switch, 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 switch. I'm sure you're challenged because now you have to do everything uh, the other way around because like, you're actually like, making your brain suffer more. But again, please don't take that that way. I want you to think very positively to exercise this activity daily basis. You can just start with one hand, then eventually the other hand, go with both hands, eventually do a, the opposite switch, uh, what they call switching, right? You need to practice this more because it is important that we need to have our brain to be, as, to be activated so that we make it young. Now, let's give you a talk about study hard versus study smart. Because a lot of people have this mindset, we have to study smart, we have to study smart, we have to study smart. I totally agree, study smart is very, very important. But what if you don't study hard first? Because people want to skip the important path to be able to reach out to the study smart. Let me prove to you. Okay, I'm going to give you a challenge again. I need you to sum up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 all the way to 100 and tell me the answer. Of course, you can use calculator. You can do many calculations like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, okay, uh, equals to 10 and then so on and so forth. But it will take a longer time. What if I need this answer to be shown in 5 seconds? 5 seconds, okay? It becomes a challenge. But again, if you look at geniuses, everything is not a challenge for them because they take it very co constructively and positively. They start looking at the pattern. So this boils down to like study hard, study smart. It can be working hard versus working smart. They all boil down to the fundamental, the same thing, which is called effectiveness and efficiency. Being effective and being efficient. 
What's the difference? Here I give you two choices of uh, connection. Do the right thing, do the things right. Okay. So because I can't interact with you, I will just go straight and share with you. Effectiveness, do you think is connecting to do the right thing or connecting to do the things right? Okay. And was like, likewise, efficiency is doing the right thing or do the things right. It's very important actually we, at all times, let's do it right before we do better and better. So I'll just go straight and let you understand. Being effective is to do the right thing. Right? You can tell me you're super efficient, but everything's wrong. Example, I need you to deliver, deliver this pilot span to go to Clank. We all say in KL, huh? we need to uh, in PJ. We need to deliver this in Clank. But I'm going to deliver it to KL. I'm doing the wrong thing, so I'm not being effective. But if I ask you, please deliver this span to go to Clank, I'm very clear about the objective is to make this to deliver to Clank, but I need to find the means of transportation by grab, by car, by motorbike, by cycling, or even by walking. So I need to find an efficient way is to do the things right effectively. But here I add one more, naturally. Now, let me bring you to that natural later part. Huh? Okay, let's go focus on this one. How can I do this fast? One plus two plus three plus four, all the way to 100. So actually, if you understand, the answer is one plus 10 equals 101. Let me I add this, the outer numbers together. Then two plus 99, three plus 98, and so forth. Until the last two number, 50 plus 51. So at all times, they're giving the same answer as 101. But how many 101 are there? You must, they are total of 50. Therefore, they give you an answer of 5,050. I could apply the same when I add 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to 10. I could do the same by repeating 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way to 1,000. You are still repeating the same thing. But the key word is actually why study hard is more important than study smart. You can't do this shortcut mathematics without acquiring the foundation. Means you have to know what 0 to 9 is or what are they then the eventually you need to familiar with the arithmetic operator plus uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If you do not know any of this, you can't do this shortcut I'm going to share with you. I hope you agree with me. Eh? Now, again, let's do it right before you do better and better. Just to demonstrate why it's important to have the effectiveness before efficiency. Now, let's do this one. We're going to take a bit of time. Eh? 1,000 minus 478. Let me subtract 478 from 1,000. I'm sure you have learned from teacher in the school. Teacher say 1,000 minus 478. Zero cannot minus eight. So I had to do borrowing from next door. So you have 10 minus, okay, number eight is actually equals to two. Then same thing, because I added, okay, I added this one. Okay, I need to remove this one. So I, I, I borrow, so I cannot add, so I have become two. Then this now come nine, I got five, two, two. This is what we have been taught, do borrowing. How about the efficient way? Efficient means that how can you eliminate mistake? How can you do faster? This is what I meant by efficient. I mean, I save time, but yet I get the correct result. So do you agree that 1,000 is equal to 999 plus 1? Okay, 999 plus 1, because we all agree that 1,000 is equivalent to 999 plus 1. And I just have to use 999 minus 478. So immediately you get 521, add back the one equals to 522. Can you follow me? If you do, please share me one in the chat box. Right, very good. Thank you, Jason. How about others? Right, if you fail to follow me, please let me know. Huh? Because I want you to understand 1000, we all agree is equal to equivalent to 1999 plus one. And use a 999 minus 478. Huh? I don't even have to do any borrowing. I, I minimize on the mistake. I just have to remember add the one back, become five to two. Answer is the same. Now, from efficient, I've done it right. I've done it better. How can I make it even better? Okay. How can I do this better? I'm sure you, we, are, we, are, we have a thinking, thinking ability. So you just have to figure out something that can do better than me. I'll be very pleased. So allow me because of the time constraint. Just take note of this. Nine plus one equals to what? Is nine is ten. So I will just do this special way. Nine nine ten minus four seventy eight, and I get five two two, right? So amazing, right? Because our human brain are very 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 fit. It's actually very fantastic. We are able to do something very special. Of course, if you were to follow and do this in the school, teacher will give you zero mark. But again, in reality, in organization, boss don't care how you do it. As long as, as long as you agree to do it within the timeline, you have to deliver the result as you agree upon. So we emphasize, yes, 
We have to be able to have the right mindset to acquire all the skill and knowledge, but we have to do it the faster way. I mean, like I say, do it right before you get better and better. I hope you follow. Now, this is actually very important. I got my, to watch, eh? my two sacks of goodness right here. Water. So what we're going to do, just going to give you an idea of how this food is breaking down in your body. I'm just going to put it in some jars, kind of show you how it breaks down on its own over time, over the next, you know, four, five, six, seven months. So in here, we've got my favorite right there, the Big Mac. So we're going to put the Big Mac right here in jar number one. Chicken McGrill. So there you go. Boy, let me tell you something, the smell of this food, I just want to take a bite out of it already. One of the worst things on the whole menu, the filet o fish Look at that thing. It still looks terrible. Going right in there. Next, quarter pounder. That actually looks like meat. There's the quarter pounder. Some fantastic fries. So we're just going to dump right in this jar. Right there. In that last jar, we're going to get a hamburger from up the street. From a place where they actually make real hamburgers. Where they take the patties and they press them with their own hands and put them on the grill. You know, it's like real meat. And lastly, french fries from a regular restaurant. See what happens at the same time. Two weeks, french fries from a regular restaurant. Two weeks, french fries from a McDonald's restaurant. Two weeks sweaty, moldy burger in there. That burger's all moldy. The flavor is just starting to mold. That's some kind of cheeseburger. And the Big Mac, still nothing. Big Mac hasn't even started to mold yet. Big Mac still looks like we just bought that thing. Lettuce a little moldy. Chicken McGrill definitely seen some better days. That thing is beat up. Filet of fish, look at that white fuzz on the top of it. The quarter pounder, that thing's got a rainforest going on inside there. This burger, same thing. Look, it's starting to get juicy on the bottom. The bun is just like coagulating into some kind of goo. Here's the regular french fries. Those things are black and crazy. Want to see what the McDonald's french fries look like? Check this out. That's right. Some kind of fluke of nature. That's right. This can't explain. But this is what you're eating every time you get these fries. Ooh, that's the Big Mac. That looks good, doesn't it? Mmm, look at this. Oh, the chicken McGrill looks fantastic. Oh, that's so yummy. Look at the filet of fish. That's very impressive. The quarter pounder really coming to the end of the road. And are you ready for the french fries? You ready? That's right. Look at that, folks. Why are these not breaking down? That's a really good question. And you have to ask yourself, wow. What's that doing in my stomach then? Big Mac, eight weeks. Mmm, chicken McGrill. I don't even know what that runny liquid goo is right there. Now we move on to the delicious filet of fish. What do we got? Eight weeks. Mossy goodness. Look at that fuzzy little sandwich. Here's the quarter pounder with cheese and the little sweat box that's happening there. Look at that. Looks like the ice age is set in on our quarter pounder with cheese. McDonald's french fries. It's now been two months and look what's happening here. That's right. Still nothing. Two and a half months. Yeah. Ten weeks on the Big Mac. Frosty goodness. Look at the chicken McGrill. Mmm, 10 weeks. All oh, the filet of fish Oh, it does it get any better than that? I don't even know what that fuzz on the top is. Week number 10, quarter pounder. Some kind of crazy little like, science experiment happening there. Look at that. What is wrong with that? There's not even one little sporozoar on there. There's not nothing breaking down. Nothing. <laughs> Looks like we bought them yesterday. Okay, 10 weeks.
Okay, just uh, parents, just to, this is a take note, right? So McDonald's French fry, if you have the time available, so you can go to YouTube and look for this title called Super Size Me. It's a genuine documentary that this gentleman, his name is uh, Bullock. Actually, he, uh, I can't remember his name for, because I've been a while already. He just challenged himself to experience how bad is McDonald's to his health. So he challenged himself every day, three meals for the next 30 days. So please allow yourself to have the time to watch this particular documentary. Okay. At the same time, please also to uh, let you know why obesity become a major issue to the nation. In fact, Malaysia was ranked number one in Asia. And not only that, we also have the most dialysis center in the world because of the diabetics. So I need you to understand it is important that if you want your children to be super healthy, super smart, you need to take good care of their health. Eat everything that's natural as much as possible. Okay, so stop. Please do the right thing. Now, this is going to be quick a challenges, right? I'm not going to elaborate as like in detail, but I want you to realize these are the six challenges for our brain potential and the reason why some of the children have challenges uh, to, to, to be able to pick up information. So number one, what do you think is the most difficult question to ask myself? If you can, please answer. Otherwise, I'm going to give you the answer uh, shortly. What is the most scarce resources in this world? What is really in scarcity? What is the most difficult job to do in this world? What is actually the toughest thing to break in this world? And what is the biggest room that we all process, but yet we, our, the utilization is almost minimum, right? What is the most powerful tool that we all process, okay? And we actually don't utilize to the fullest, okay? Now, sorry. What is the most difficult job, uh, difficult question to ask myself? I need you to understand, always as a parent, ask your children, what do you really, really want? Okay. When I say what you really want, actually, I like ask them to start thinking what, they, what do they really want to be in their life? What do they really want to achieve when they do certain tasks? Always ask them what do they want, what do they want? So the most difficult question to ask myself is that what do I really, 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 really want? Okay. So as a parent, you must guide the children to understand, to do their finding about what they can or what they want in their life or what they want to do for certain objective, for certain tasks and for them life purpose. Number two, what's the most scarce resource in this world? The most scarce resource in this world is not water, it's not money, it's not oil. Okay, it is actually time. Always value the time, especially your children. The critical time for them to acquire the learning skill is up to 12 years old. I'm not saying that up to 12 they can't learn, but the time that for them to be able to adopt information, to acquire information, to learn very easily is by 12 uh, until 12 years old. So please always appreciate this golden period to train your children as much as they can. Okay, but of course you have to start from must train them to know what they want. What's the most difficult job to do in this world? If you go Google, this, actually, this is actually one of the most difficult job is to smell people's armpit. Why? Because people need to develop the perfume to resolve all this odor smell uh, issue and so forth. But to me, this is not the most difficult job as from a perspective of brain. The most difficult job to do in this world is to think. Of course, not be the gorilla. It's to think. Thinking is the most difficult job to do in this world. So have to encourage not only the children's ability to learn, have to encourage them to be able to think as well then please don't, don't go and critic, criticize the answer. Like I say, let them, let their imagination, let their, their what they call the picture flow inside from, from their head. Okay. What is the biggest room that we process? Oh, sorry. Before that, number four, what is the toughest thing to break in this world? Habit. So habits are meant to be trained from young. Okay. Earlier I say, why children don't like to go exercises? Imagine when they go to primary school, they only have one period, 30 minutes for exercises. So can you imagine how can children be interested in exercising while you only let them have minutes to go and exercise? In fact, in some, to some school, right, they don't even have their slot anymore. It's to occupy for other subject matters, right? So the next one is, what's the biggest room that we all possess? It's a room for learning. We must be a learner, okay? All leaders are, are readers. All leaders always learn. Same goes to 21st century. Children are not given a choice not to be able to become adaptable to learning. What's the most powerful tool that we all process? It's actually our brain. Okay, how many percent have been utilized? If you go on 21st century, our brain potential is up to 3%. Okay, I just want to share with you. Okay, uh, 
So again, parents and children, do they think alike? Frankly, we are not. There's a reason why children, they like to ask 10, 10 100,000 questions. What's I, why, 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 why? And of course, parents must have the patient and know how to actually guide them through. So just imagine this is one typical picture I would like to share with all of you, right? Especially parents, when you see a bird flying in the sky, the typical thought that we have in mind is actually like how to shoot it down and go and what's the best way to cook and eat it. But for children, they will always have this hesitation. They always ask why. How, how come the, the bird can fly? The basis on what to fly. How can they lift themselves up to fly in the sky and we human beings cannot? They always have a lot, lot of why, why, why inside their head. So never kill their imagination, never kill their curiosity. Always allow them to start question. Of course, I'm sure parents will ask me, how do I ask, how do I answer them? We, we as a parent, you can't possibly know everything. We just ask them, what do you think? What do you think? Let them figure out themselves because we need them to be able to really start having a lot of curiosity in their mind at all times, right? So this is very important for all parents to understand the growth of the brain. When a baby was delivered and checked into this world, they already accomplished 25% of the adult brain. This is an adult brain, eh? 100%. You see baby already inside mother's womb, start developing their brain. That's why they start learning inside the, the, the mother's, mother's tummy, tummy. Right? So that's the reason why we call it prenatal, train them from very young. If you have an opportunity to deliver another new baby, okay? so make sure you train them beforehand. Okay? And when they reach to 18 year old, they already accomplish 50% of the adult brain. 3 year old, 60% to 80% of the adult brain. That's why they're this saying, like father, like son, like mother, like daughter. In the Chinese saying, they always say, at the age of 3 year old, determine their fate up to 80 year old. That's a true saying because this is a time whereby they are super learning machine. They mimic what you do. I'm sure you observe, how come I don't train my children uh, to, to, to learn how to use remote control to open my car, to operate a DVD player and so forth. Why? They've been repeatedly observing what you do. They copycat what you do. So when you reach to six year old, they already accomplished 90% of the brain, capacity of the brain, of the adult brain. So do take care of it. They train them from young. Okay? Don't wait till they're seven year old. Uh, sorry. Uh, like three-year-old to five-year-old, bring them to kindergarten, and then seven-year-old start to go to primary school. Please remember, parents are very much obligated to explore their brain potential to the maximum as much as possible. Okay, let you watch this clips. Oops, sorry, the clip doesn't run. So I'll just stop here and I'll let you proceed. The next one, please important, remember this. As an adult, okay, you don't just take care from young, even when they reach your adulthood, even yourself, please start taking care, good care of your brain. Now, I want you to see that a fully developed brain at 100%, this is actually the size of the brain. If you do not take care of your brain properly, not enough oxygen, water, nutrients, mineral, and so forth, by the age of 70, your brain will shrink by 50%. That's why you see their body start to shrink simply because we don't take care of the brain. At the age of 90, you're shrink by 70%. The fundamentals that please make sure the children drink a lot of good water, and also breathe well, breathing. Eh? Now, neuron development are very important because here I won't elaborate further. It's just that our brain are, are growing every day. I'm sure you heard this word called neuroplasticity. Plasticity. Neuroplasticity is to be able to help, to help them to expand at all times. Even sometimes you look at children, they have damaged brain, 
they can go back to normal as long as they understand how to be able to appreciate the brain activation. Like I say, our brain potential is only less than 3%. Train them to know how to activate their brain potential. Now, unstimulated brain, this is actually how it looks like. You keep on stimulating your brain, they have a lot of neural pathway. We call it that a highway. So you just imagine that when they find out one way doesn't work, they'll come out the second way. Second way doesn't work, you'll come out the third way. So keep stimulating their brain for them to learn. Okay? Stimulating like doing a lot of activities whereby we, they, don't, they don't get used to exposed. Like from very young, train them to know how to climb a tree. Teach them how to dive in the water. Deal with different, different challenges. Don't take it like they are so precious whereby don't dare to let them get injured sometimes. Of course, I'm not talking about injured as to like they get wounded and they, they, they become paralyzed. No. Let them experience pain sometimes. Okay? Hopefully, there's some, an around that I can share with you more. Like, what's the difference between left brain and right brain? Left brain is actually talking about elaboration, breakdown in detail, where right brain is actually looking at the whole picture. That's why we always think in picture. Whatever pieces that we have inside the head, we have to break it down into pieces. One of the most popular author called J.K. Rowling, who write Harry Potter, she have all the imagine inside the head as a video form, but eventually he transformed or transcribed them into information that can be appreciated by all the readers or by all by us human beings. So it is important that we need to distinguish between the left and the right brain. And in fact, we know that, oh, right brain control left side of the body, the left brain control the right side of the body. But very important, we also have to understand each part of the brain, the hemisphere of the brain of left brain does do things differently from the right brain. We are so used to in 21st century talk about uh, in sequential, analytical, the mathematics, the language and so forth. We omitted the right brain on in terms of creativity. It's a creative brain. So whereby intuition, creativity, the feeling, think in picture, very sensitive to sound, the song, daydreaming, imagination are all activation of the right brain. And this is actually start available in the children from the, the time they check out until 12 years old. I'm not saying that after 12, they will lose their creativity. It's just that it become very challenging because they need to elaborate in the logical, in the logical explanation. Our well, next contestant, good, good video, our video. next contestant hails from Columbus, Georgia. Let's hear it for Dee Westry. Come on out, Dee. Oh. All right, all right, all right. All right, so what is your talent? What will you be performing today? I'm a speed painter, and I'm going to do a painting in a minute and a half or less. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's hear it for Dee Westry. gentleman was doing drawing everybody was meant to figure out what was he drawing but they can't figure out at all I just want to share with you this painter is actually very powerful with his right brain so just watch carefully Right. Okay. I also want to share with you, human brain are very powerful that we all can be born like a superman or supergirl or even as a genius. So here, this particular screen, I need you to count the black dots. Okay. Figure out if you're able to count exactly how many black dots are there. Okay. 
if, if you have a very good quality of the resolution of the screen, right, I'm sure you have challenges to really properly, really properly to count the number of black dots, right? I'll show you the other one. This is actually drawn by a Japanese paint, painter. Okay, it's actually a rattlesnake fighting its own tail. I'm sure you see they are rotating. See, human beings have one million million brain cell. We have uh, like light receptor. Please note that uh, this we have 130 million light receptor each. I mean, we have to be just like Spider Man. We have the like the fly, like the dragonfly, like the bee, and so forth. We have the world most sophisticated uh, vibration detector, and yet we don't know how to use it. We cannot be as good as a dog, right? The nose can detect presence of a small part and object in one part per trillion. We have very powerful senses, and yet we don't know how to optimize it. Really, because we have not been know how to train. Uh, let me give an example. Huh? I want you to pay attention to where I put these black dots. Put all your eye focus, focal point. Let me it's a focal point. Concentrate on this black, uh, these red dots. I'm sure if you're really able 100%, put all your 100% two eye concentration on this red dot, you will not be able to see any black dots anymore because you are putting 130 million light receptor each of your eyes to look at the focus on today's red dot. That's why meditation, when people do meditation, they have to close their eyes to be able to put a focal point. Same thing. I want you to put your eye concentration focal point onto this particular red dot. And I'm sure you see the rattlesnake is already in the station mode. I mean, it's a no, no longer moving. So it's all about training, understanding how, how powerful our brain is. Just that we have to find the right method to train our brain. Okay. Now, we are already coming to approach to the end. I need you to look at this screen. I'm sure when you look at this screen, you know this is an iceberg, right? Iceberg, you can start associate to one very popular, popular movie, blockbuster movie called Titanic, You Jump, I Jump. Titanic was in, actually in a history whereby declared it's an unsinkable ship and yet when it knocked onto the iceberg, it sunk. Why? Because this is actually the ice, small ice cube above the horizon of the sea. They didn't realize that underneath there's a bigger cube of the iceberg, right? It's a bigger cube ice. So when they knocked onto the iceberg, they actually sunk because they broke the, the ship broke and water flowed in and they sunk. So I need to relate that we have one brain, but we have another component called the mind. Okay, the mind. So this mind is more powerful than the brain because without the mind, you cannot control your hand. Of course, brain is a physical object. Mind is actually like it's an intangible thing whereby we don't think where they are, but it existed. Okay, so I just want you to imagine. At all time, captain is always standing at the tip of the iceberg because you need to show or give direction, right? So captain, and underneath the iceberg, there's a millions of soldiers waiting to serve the captain. Imagine this. Parents, listen, listen carefully. If, I, if the kids say, I'm very stupid, I'm very dumb, I'm very sick. So the, so the captain says so, therefore the soldier will just answer, yes, sir. Okay, boss want to be sick, one, boss want to be dumb, boss want to be... Uh, uh, what they call uh, uh, incompetent. So this is all information coming from, from the captain. But now, before 12 years old, especially before 6 years old, who is a captain? Please note, parents, you are the captain to your soldier, which is to your children. Anything you say, they always idolize you. When you tell them you're stupid, you're stupid, you're no good, obviously they will take it very positively as, yes sir, we are stupid. Okay. And I need you to be very careful with the choice of word because if you don't raise a positive child, the choice of word is very, very important. Okay, I give you an example. Most of the children, when they're into the excitement mode, assignment mode, be it children, parents, or even the teachers, right? You start realizing when you ask them, please don't run, please don't run, you will see that they run more vigorously. You ask them, uh, don't shout, don't shout, they will shout louder. Why? Because when they're into the high mode, their subconscious mind listens to the last choice of word called run or the shout. So therefore, they shout louder, they run more vigorously. So therefore, the choice of word is very important. You have to ask them to stop. You have to ask them to keep quiet. Choice of word are very important because, please remember, like I said earlier, children are learning machine. They are basically in the soldier mode. They are not in the captain mode. They have, they, are in, they have inability to start thinking what is called right or wrong. They only follow orders. You have to train to, for their soldiers to work properly and accordingly. Okay, Conscious mind and the subconscious mind. So therefore, if you train them to think negatively, they behave negatively. You train them to think positively, they always attract positivity. That's very important. Okay. Now let me introduce my daughter. Right. This person, like I told, like I said, everybody has to make sure that she knows what she wants. She wants to be a dancer. This is actually where this shot was taken in Taipei when she won championship in the ballet competition. Right. She'll be introducing, I want to be a dancer, I want to be a leader. Right. So, and in fact, 
uh, not only she won, she won be a champion, all the judges commented she have a very beautiful arch at the feet, right? Because I particularly emphasize that all parents must take care of the children's feet, especially at the arch side, okay? And very unfortunately, sorry to share if I actually offended some of the parents, educators, or even doctors, huh? please, if you're given a choice, make sure our child are being delivered naturally, not cesarean bond. Otherwise, they're flat-footed. They will have scoliosis because they have inability for the muscle to go against a gravity pool, right? Okay, in fact, uh, last, last year, it was last year, yes, when she was like 13, 14, uh, she took part in the adult competition, I mean, open competition. For nine events, she won six gold medals, right? She already have ability to compete, okay? <laughs> was able to actually like with one breath die in the water and swim 25 meter okay in one breath uh, with one breath okay so she also a memory champion in 2017 whereby all the uh, 12 events she actually won like silver gold and so forth uh, in fact international she actually have the silver for the name and faces okay same goes to the november 11 okay she also good in public speaking and also in sharing storytelling and in fact in in 2017 when she was standard six among the 2000 uh, 205 school, she actually won second place. A very good morning to the honorable and the deepest and 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 any prizes and so forth. I'm more concerned about her ability to have breakthrough. For example, when she was standard six, okay, all the competition they asked her to participate in only with two hours of preparation. For example, like this English storytelling, she only had two hours to prepare before she to go to the stage and start sharing her story. And amazingly, she won champion in this, right? Uh, for Malay, she got third place. And for Mandarin, she actually got fourth place, right? So like I said, my intention is not for her to win any awards whatsoever. It's more for her to be able to identify her breakthrough. note I, I, I show share with you fair share with you this one because once she won champion in the Taipei competition because this is actually an adult dance like I say I need her to have her personal breakthrough which she did okay in fact when she was 12 years old and four months you can see here she went for a test and a connective test as to like a test on her long-term memory working memory visual processing the processing speed uh, amazingly at 12 years and four months she already qualified to study in the UNICE in America so mean me to say that there are certain parts of things that I've done right for her to be able to explore her brain potential at the optimal point. Look at her brain processing was at 99%. Okay, 99%. So I, like I say, every children are born with his or her special ability, with her special talent. But more importantly, do take note of what I shared earlier about making, making sure that they know what they want, even though they might, they might be uncertain. Just encourage them to start thinking. Okay, in fact, QQ accomplishment, you can see here in Latin, she won a lot of champion. 
she also granted the full scholarship to study uh, this year, 2020, in one of the inter entrepreneur school, international school with full scholarship. Uh, she also received a lot of uh, scholarship in 2018 and 2019, three from America, three from Singapore, three from Hong Kong, you know, Japan, France, Indonesia, and even London. And I actually sent her to France, why? is to experience different Europe culture. And why particularly in Indonesia, amazingly in 2018 and 2019, under her category, they were the world number one champion. And in fact, uh, last year, on November 7, she, was, uh, she took part into this uh, uh, UNICEF called SDG, uh, Sustainable Development Goal. This is actually a vision that we need to accomplish by 2030. Uh, being the first time she participated, she was selected to become a co-host. Okay, now, like I say, I do not just want children to have potential. I need the daddy mommy to be super healthy. This particular lady, right, on 2017, she was actually handled by my student, but unfortunately the student couldn't settle her because she wanted to get married in four months time. So when she came to me, say, wanted to settle her problem, she wanted me to promise four months. I said, I can't promise you unless you put an effort on your own. So in six months time, she became beautiful, right? And she, was, she got married on the 2017. And 2018, she got pregnant and delivered this very healthy baby. So like I said, everything is doable and all the approach and remedy, I always go with natural approach. I just want to share, this is how, how powerful our mind and the brain is. And of course, have to blend it with natural approach to actually rectify some of our challenges. Okay, so this is all I'd like to share. If you do have any questions, uh, please do not hesitate to post into the chat box or even unmute and ask me. But just uh, before that, uh, let me, uh, okay, study. Okay, one is actually saying six years old, very hard to pay attention. Okay, please note, uh, like I say, all children will have the ability to pay attention if you let them do what they love to do. Example, do not allow them to write, allow them to draw. I shared earlier, encourage them to draw their name, draw ABC, draw the Chinese character and so forth. Because you must understand children before seven year old, they have these challenges with eye hand coordination. So you, especially when, why children hate to go to school? Please note uh, parents, why children hate to go to school? Because when they come home, they have to do homework, write their name, for example. For sure, the attention span is only 15 minutes, one five, and they write beautifully originally. Of course, not very precisely, they write beautifully, but as they, they are, they are, com, their concentration start to deteriorating, deteriorate, we, they will start to like writing very smear, with smear or out of the box or out of the line, okay? In fact, this is not supposed to be the case. You encourage them to draw. As long as they know how to write their name, that's adequate. Because eventually, when they go, when age of seven, they go to primary school, the teacher will insist that they have to write within a with precision. Prior to that, they don't talk about precision, talk about acquiring all the necessary knowledge that they can actually understand. Know how to write ABC, know how to write the word, know how to write the, the Chinese character and so forth. That'll be adequate. Secondly, encourage them, okay? Do what they are love to do, especially using all their hand, finger, eye, and so forth. That's why I developed a game. It's meant not only for kids, also for seniors. Okay, even for adults, to be able to integrate the brain, eye, hand, and mouth, right? You'd be amazed when you start playing with it, you realize that, hey, all my sensory are not integrated. Okay, you need to understand that. Okay, do slow. Like I say, children are meant to play. While playing, teach them how to learn, not to write a lot of homework. During my time with my daughter, she never wrote a single word. She never do homework. She play, but she learned all the necessary skills that are appreciated by the brain. She acquired good memory skill. She acquired good presentation skill. She acquired all the connective whereby she was a good sports lady. In fact, uh, this year in February, she took part, invited by the school, encouraged by the school to take part in the national Selangor State. She only had two weeks of preparation. And amazingly, she, she was ranked about 64 uh, among hundreds of all these uh, uh, can, uh, uh, can contestants. Okay? I'm okay with it because she only have very limited time to get herself prepared. But the best part actually for the three day consecutive competition, she still had the energy to continue study, to do her work and so forth. This is what we want. We want children have ability, have all the energy to be able to focus at work. And she also had to be learnable, right? Next one is actually uh, lazy to do her work. Frankly, even if I ask you, give you a lot of homework, you also be lazy. Then don't encourage them. Encourage them to read, but have to read what? Read a lot of comics drawing and then ask them to portray their imagination and please if you can if you can afford stop playing with handphone stop watching tv 
example, what's the difference between reading a Harry Potter book, book and watching a Harry Potter TV? All the Harry Potter TV casters actually read preset. But if you ask them to read the book, they start imagining, creating their own imagination inside their head. Their Harry Potter could be different from you. Example, don't think about pink elephant. Every time my elephant is always Dumbo, which actually come from cartoon, not the real elephant that are known. Now, I give an example to parents. Please note that this is a very important subject. Children love to tell you, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, simply because we kill their creativity. Uh, this real case I'd like to share with you, a parent came to me with complaint. She showed, she, uh, she showed me a picture of his son drawing, color with an elephant color with yellow color. So he asked me, how can you teach my child to draw, draw on color the elephant with yellow color? So I told, her, I, I told her straight, I have no idea, but good that you can invite your child to come and share with you and explain to you what he did. So eventually I asked the boy, come share with your mommy, why do you color your elephant yellow color? Then she shared, I love to eat banana. So it's my, so it's my elephant. So that's why my elephant is yellow color. So I asked the, I asked the parent, ask the mother, are you, can you accept this answer? So he just, just keeps quiet. Then he asked again, why do all the leg of the elephant is yellow, is green color? Because he, he, he replied, Uncle SK always encourage you, walk bare feet at the natural ground. All the glass are being stepped, it become green color. So I, I asked her again, can you accept the answer? Like I say, never give them answer. Encourage them to think, encourage them to express with their thought. So this is more important than asking them to do homework because homework is merely just to make sure they know how to write beautifully. But please, it's very harmful to their hand. In fact, our pencil, okay, children should use crayon, not pencil, not pen, because they're too hard for, for the children. That's why I look at Chinese, they use calligraphy. They only use a very soft, uh, what they call the fur, to be able to learn how to write Chinese character. Okay. Should you sign your child for the curriculum? Yes, please expose them. But in fact, please identify and always ask your children what you want. Where, be it, they want to be a pianist, you want to be a dancer, they want to be a chef or whatever it is. They can always influence by the TV. Please ask them to do some, acquire some skill. But more importantly, please make sure that you can encourage them to exercise and run around, to perspire, sweat, okay? And also for them to have all the energy required. Uh, play phone, sorry, parents, because you have to set rules, okay? Children, I would allow children to play phone with condition. You have to set condition because you are the leader of the house, right? You have the parent at home, you have to set rules for them to play with the, with the handphone. I give an example. I never have internet. I never have TV at my home until QQ was 12 years old. Only upon, I told her, after you finish your, your uh, examination, I'll start to have a TV and the internet because that's a time whereby they start learning how to think. Okay, any more questions? I'm done from, I'm done here right now. And uh, do post some questions if you do, you do have. I know it's very challenging, and but it's very fun. Please spend time, spend more time with the children. Understand what their needs are. Communicate with your children, right? And if time permit, the next round, I would like to share with you more and more, okay? Okay, thank you, Mr. Tan. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for every parents to join this event. Much appreciate with your time and effort as we know that parent-child relationship is important. And we always need to improve ourselves to the higher standard to move forward. Again, thank you everyone to have a great discussion and sharing with the speaker. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.